Emily and I just played Archaeologic. This is a deduction game, yes. which Emily loves. Like um, it. it is a spatial deduction game. There are some things that this has in common with a lot of the other deduction games, like the Turing Machines of the world, like the Break the Cubes of the world, and things like that. Uh, but we're going to give you a rundown of our first experience playing it. And if this is interesting to you, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out those other videos that we've done on other deduction games as well. Absolutely. So let's get right to it. I'm going to reveal this so people <gasps> dun, can see dun, everything. Dun. Everyone's going to have a board behind them and you're going to be trying to deduce the one solution to this puzzle of how these six buildings, mm -hmm. which are these little polyomino tiles, fit into this little area. And as you can see, there's gonna be some gaps. At the beginning of the game, you're gonna take one of these out of the box and there's plenty of these in there. Yep. And you're going to play in one of a couple different ways. You're gonna use this piece right here to reveal clues. Mm -hmm. Everyone three. gets three clues. And then if you wanna play on an easier mode, everyone could get five clues. And you can even use this mechanism to give some people <laughs> no clues <laughs> and some other people all five clues so that it kind of evens it out. It gives those players a distinct head start in terms of understanding where some of the information is. I would say too that this these clues you're getting for this game are pretty advantageous too. So the clues that they're giving you is these little symbols which are on all of the little buildings. So you have like the, the sharp ones, you have the fire ones, and then the blue ones are everywhere else. Um, so I'll either see the sharp ones or the fire ones, and each clue is going to give me one location of where one of those things are on the board. When you start with that, because they're so specifically located on each space and each piece, it really gives you a lot of information, yes, honestly. Yes, it can. The more you get, the more information yes. is valuable. This is an example, if you can see it, of clue number one. It says this little orange triangular symbol is in C2. So C2, we knew that this was right here. Then you get two more. So you know that those are in there. Then you all have these same pieces and you can kind of, you know, if you get five clues, my guess, and we've only played this once, is that you're gonna be able to go, oh, well, I think this piece is the only piece that can that work can, here. Yeah. Because once I got this, these two pieces of information, I was able to determine that is the only of the six pieces that can go there. So then I can kind of like go from there. And that's where the game really that's comes That's what in. you're doing. So each time on your turn, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna move the archaeoscope one space and that's gonna tell you which row or column you're yes. actually gonna be looking at. So on this turn, I'd look at four. So on the fourth row, I can also spend some additional time, which is like the resource I'm spending here, to move it one further so I can look at C instead, or I could spend two time and put it anywhere I want. Um, and then I can do one of three different types of things. I can look at that row and I can say how many buildings are in that row. So like on four right now, there are three different buildings or how many empty spaces. There's one empty space. Or I can say how many of those special symbols, the orange and pink symbols are there across that row. And it'll tell me which orange and pink symbols are in that row. Or I can ask about a very specific shape. So. I can use any of the shapes and say like, okay, I want to do the three that are in a, in a row. How many of those are in four? And it could tell me none. It's not there at all. It could tell me one of the blue ones, or it could tell me one of the orange ones, or it could tell me all three are there. Um, so it just, that's giving you more information, but it is going to cost you more time. Right. And as you can see, I've been fiddling with this device here <laughs> that they give you. And it is a bit fiddly because you have this device that has a rotating piece on it. You're going to line that up to the type of piece you want to ask about or any of those other three things Emily mentioned. And then if you're looking at four, you line up the four in this bottom slot, line up the whole thing, and then you're left with some information in some of these uh, circles. In this case, no information. Yep. Um, but as with many deduction games, at certain points, no information like that is can the be most information. great information yes, to get. Yes. But that is what you're doing to try to gather information uh, to hopefully get to the point where you know exactly how these are positioned. And we both got there. Emily, yes. unfortunately, got there <laughs> just before I did, so she won the game. But we both got to the point where we knew these pieces were in these shapes because we gathered information about where things were for certain pieces. Now, can you deduce a lot? Now, we've only played it the one time and I would say based on our first experience, we felt there was, it was felt more gathering of information yeah. 
less deduction. And the thing is too, like you think about with this, because it's a spatial puzzle, it does matter exactly how each building is placed. Yeah. So like it could seem like this solution is very similar to this solution, right? I just move one piece, 190 degrees, but that's not right. Right. So like you have to have enough information that you can really distinguish between is the is the triangle piece going this way or is it going the other way? What what's happening here? And so you have to do a lot of kind of digging through it. The other thing that's happening is that the person who is uh, in last is going to take another turn, right? So it's like many other of the games like Search yeah, for the Lost Search for, Species, yeah. Search for Planet X, where I can choose to do smaller actions that are going to give me less information and then just like keep trudging up one at a time, one at a time, um, so that I get more information, even though it's not as helpful information. Right. Um, and I feel like you kind of have to do that at some places in this because you have to have a lot of information to be able to say like, I know where each of these six have to be in order to make this the only possible solution. Yeah, I felt like, I don't know if you felt this way, but if I was far enough behind you, I would always at least burn a question yeah. on a one that moved me one, knowing that I was still behind you, and, and then I could go turn. further. It would be silly to go ahead and do a three and jump over you so that I was yeah. not getting two turns. I could always do that. now. That would oftentimes put me maybe way out ahead of you, so you could get even more, maybe two questions that cost one time and then a big one. But that is the other big element here. And the interesting thing that this does is it allows you, like Emily said at the get-go, you can go wherever you want. You can yeah. ask information about any of these things, any of the rows, any of the columns. It's just going to cost you even more time. Mm -hmm. And there was, I think, one... You didn't ever did that, did I you? I never did it. No. I did it once where I spent an extra time to move from four because I wanted to know about C yeah. instead of four. But like I said, you could spend two time and just say, I really want to know about three. And if you're towards the end of the game and you're like, I really, all I need to know is this question about yeah. three, it might be worth it. Um, it just depends on whether or not it's going to get back around to you, which is a lot of how these games work. Well, and you can also kind of put that into it as well of thinking like, okay, if I take two small turns, it's going to go here and here, and then it'll be David's, and then it'll be mine. So like, where do I want it to end? At a higher player count, and this plays up to four, there's a lot more variability of what's oh, yeah. actually going to happen there. So I think most of the time you are just using time to get to whatever thing you actually want to ask about. But you need information about every angle of this anyway. Yeah, it's nice that it has that flexibility. We were Before we recorded this, we were talking about Clue, the uh, classic yes, deduction yes. game, and sort of the one big downside to Clue that everyone, I think, agrees on is you're rolling a die and moving around a board, and like, I can't ask about the one room. It's on the other side. Yeah, you're like, I the... know it's in the study, but I'm so far from the study. How do I get to the study? Yeah, this effectively takes that and says, you can go to the study, but it's, it's going to cost be, you yeah. some time, which I think is a good advancement for deduction games like this. Mm -hmm. I think that the spatial element is another interesting thing. I think the only other one that I can remember is uh, Break the Cube mm -hmm. th that feels similar because it's kind of polyomino-esque. Yeah. Um, but you want to know who this game is for, and who, who it's, it's not, not for. for, or at least what we think in that respect. Yeah. The easy answer here is it's for deduction fans. Now, that might sound like, you know, Obviously. an obvious <laughs> answer. But I would say if you're not a deduction fan, I don't know why you'd bother with another it's, deduction it's, game. It, it is a deduction yeah. game. And it is a deduction game that works. Mm -hmm. It's sound. It's a little fiddly at times. Um, I don't think it has as much fun, quote unquote, sure. as a lot of other deduction games. It felt very much like we were doing our own thing. Yeah. Um, I didn't even have any... There's no feedback that the game gives you naturally to get the sense of... We're close, we're almost there. Yeah, if the player's yeah. doing well or not. Yeah. Like, I literally, the only reason I asked if you were about to uh, figure it out is because I felt like I was getting close. <laughs> uh, I clearly wasn't as close. <laughs> um, but it didn't give that sort of feedback. So who it's for, it's going to only be for deduction fans. And like, I would clearly. also say, too, because of that low player interaction that we had, like, there's some in the how much time your moves take. Yeah. But I would say it's really for solo players. And you can yes. play this solo. And it has a good solo mode. It has an expert mode as well onto it. So there's more variability in what you can play. I think people who like deduction and really like a solo puzzle, this is who's going to like this. They're going to be like, oh, I want to do a little deduction. I like the kind of spatial puzzle. And I want to do it 
I think solo people are going to enjoy it both. For sure, and I think there's been more deduction games as of late. Turing Machine is also very playable solo. She loves playing it, no I matter. Do. She'd play it with 100 people if you could. <laughs> um, but that is, I think, something that a lot of deduction games are going to do in terms of lending themselves to the solo play. Yeah. yeah. Who it's not for in this case, um, Obviously, it's not for people who don't like deduction games. Yeah, there's nothing else in this. It's not like a, a deduction game, but it's also... No, no it's just is, a deduction This game. is a pure deduction game. So if you don't like those, you can probably safely stay away. Yes. Um, I would say it's more approachable than something like Turing Machine. So yeah. if, you, if you like the idea of maybe tackling Turing Machine, but it's a lot for you, this might be something that, that, that might be nice. But back to who it's not for... I don't even think it's for people who are into deduction games who want the Turing Machine like type of experience or who own Turing Machine yeah. or any other deduction game that you really like because I don't think this compares favorably to a lot of the ones that are already out on the market. I agree. So I would say that it's, it, is not, it is more accessible than Turing Machine, but not by a large margin to the point where like the people who like Turing Machine would probably just play Turing Machine. Probably. And the people who don't like it because they're like, ugh, deduction. You probably also won't like this. So it's more of like, do you like spatial puzzles and deduction? Is this your sweet spot? Then this could be the game for you. Yeah, it is kind of interesting because on the spectrum of deduction games where you have got things like Break the Cube, Cryptid on one end, mm -hmm. Turing Machine on the extreme other end, this is somewhere in between those. Yeah. And I'm not sure when it, maybe when it comes to the deduction games, there's people who like deduction down here. Yeah. And there's the people, people who, who like deduction, it. or there's people like you that like deduction in general. <laughs> uh, but even with you, I think the spectrum, there's the ones in the middle like, well, I want it to be one or the other. Yeah. yeah I yeah. want that elegant, simple experience, or yeah. I want something that's going to burn my brain exactly. and, and really work it out. So take that into consideration when you're considering archaeologic. Uh, that's what we thought of the game. If you have any questions at all about it, please make them in the comments below. We'll get, be happy to get down there and answer whatever you want to ask. Until next time, though, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then.